Crouch. Find. Set. Joe presents the House of Rugby, together with Guinness. Salutations, saucissons. I am not a sausage, my friend. <laughs> yes, you are. I'm absolutely not. Well, you are now. You've changed to the like dark it. side. <laughs> Salutations, like saucissons, and bienvenue to this week's House of Rugby, brought to you by Joe, together with our very good friends at Guinness. We're back once again. Like the Renegade Master, yeah. Hask and Tins, and uh, yours truly. Well, that, that, Hask and Tins, gonna, and our friend say, Alex the Disaster. I was going to say, ready to attack yes. the mic like a python. Yeah, yes. like I thought that. We you, we've got Hask quite a good out. stat to open this week's show. We have just stop, part. How many stop. how many downloads do you think we've done so far? Oh well, stop it. I, last time we checked in, it was seven million. When was that? Uh, a little while ago. How many really? do you think we've done? <laughs> I, well, I thought it was seven million, wasn't it? Yeah. That was lo- that was. Yeah, it was a while ago. ago. I don't know. Uh, um, nine million. Ten million downloads. Ten Woo! million downloads on House of Rugby. All aboard the downloads. Are you serious? Train, which Are you begs serious? the question: How can all those people have nothing better to do this with very their true. time? But we love, we love how you. We, not, and like, we are very grateful for your support. How do we get like fan mail and like you know endorsed? Oh, by I do. You? I get. Are the, spa- are the sponsors and stuff? Get- Guinness is great, but I want personal sponsors. How's this happened? Media whore. Uh, um, do we still get people mugging us off? Because I've not checked the comment section. Do people like that? M- m- for well, we're going to come on to that actually because that's oh, quite topical. We're going to get into the, the mess that is some of the Facebook activity on House of Rugby. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh dear, look how tired yeah. you It's Tuesday night. We're back in our regular recording time, and you've done very well to get back from <laughs> Mule Field. Yeah, it was. Uh... You don't sound any better than last week. No, I should probably be <laughs> self-inflicted. Got worse. Self-inflicted this time. Or? No, it was quite. A, it was quite a good day. I went up Thursday. Uh, Bill McLaren Foundation and just went charity. Uh, but golf. You do a lot uh, of work for it, don't you? <laughs> Renaissance uh, and Archfield, which was stunning. It was literally beautiful. How did you play? Blue sky. Yeah, we're good. Well, actually, yeah. new sticks arrived that morning. Yeah, yeah, so a lot of social media yeah, activity. They, Hashtag they, they went well. Which, com- which company? I, I thought uh, Mizuno. Oh. Right. Um, there are other golf brands available, but not as good. Got up at 5.45 on the Sunday to get my 8am flight back. Got yeah. on my 8am flight, got to... Uh, there, we had a guy picking us up who was tracking the flight on his phone and he saw us get to three kilometres away from Birmingham Airport and do a UE and go all the way back to Edinburgh. Nightmare. And all the cars were booked. Why'd they fly you back round? Because they shot Birmingham when we were that close. Why? Oh, my wind. God. Can you not get on the phone if someone to get that switched yeah. quite quickly? It's not a little Surely sort you've of got a red phone in the air. Oh. Surely there's yeah. a red phone. Hello, yeah. Mike. <laughs> is that the Queen? Um, so yeah, and then I had to go all the way back. Then couldn't get a car. Oh my God, that is so brutal. Then got an Uber to started heading south in an Uber. And then the guy who was picking us up from Birmingham headed north. <laughs> and then we met somewhere along the way and drove back down. Wow, it was a nightmare. Fifteen hours it took. Yeah. Was it worth it? Fifteen hours. Was it worth it? Must be a few for the game, money. no. No, um, for the weekend, money, yes. Jobs, uh, for the, yeah. And all the charity stuff, obviously. No, obviously you do a lot of work charity, for it, I don't know. Like. Um, well but, done for making it down. Go on. But it was good. We sat outside for the first half, and then I was like, I'm not sitting yeah. outside again for the second half. Um, how bad was it, the weather? It was horrendous. Like, horrendous. Horrendous. Yeah, it was like raining plastic bottles and shit, wasn't you it? Can, yeah. <laughs> your mother-in-law looked... <laughs> that bad. <laughs> it was that bad. People were getting hit in the head with plastic yeah. bottles. It was bad. Your mother-in-law looked immaculate regardless. Is she pissed off off the back of a Scotland loss or is she quite philosophical about it? Um, yeah, I think she was angry about last week. Yeah. Because you know, she how does that, that How does that come out? Is there sort of... No, she just she actually on the knows kitchen quite table. a lot about the game yeah, so she, she wants does. to talk about it. So um, I think she was just more frustrated that they couldn't finish anything off last oh. week. Whereas this week, I, I don't think you can take anything from that game. Yeah. You just have to go, it's the guy, it's the person who can hold the ball, kick the penalties. Yeah. I mean, Faz really struggled, but... Yeah. Um, do you, yeah, think, do, you think, do you think she'd ever want to come and be a guest on this show? We could actually get some proper rugby insight. I did think that. Mm, probably not. No, OK. It's worth a question. <laughs> I think um, you, you never know unless you ask the question. Well, that's true. Do we, should we get like an envelope we, we, of the Royal we actually Seal? Wanted, we were meant to do some reconnaissance for us as well as to whether she was happy with her portrayal in The Crown. Yeah, I haven't got around to that yet. Okay. Okay. Um, coming up this week, we're going to have a look back at a fascinating week of rugby union. Mike might be having to eat his words about Ireland in 12 months' time, and they'll be delicious. Very much doubt that. Two days after the Oscars, we're going to reflect on Groundhog Day 2, starring the one and the only Stuart Hogg. Got to keep the love for the big man. Uh, we're going to look at the role of fans after some unsavoury scenes at Murrayfield, and we're going to discuss interview techniques. Michael. 
Question number one. How good at Ireland? <laughs> uh, two from two. Talking yeah, them up are, for the Six Nations Championship. Are, the Guinness Six Nations Championship. They are two from two. Um, I just don't know whether it's are you going to full bore or not. Is there an hors d'oeuvre of um, no, like humility changed. and repentance in yeah, your... Look, nothing's, I, don't, I don't see any changes yet. Um, they, in my opinion, they were... I don't think they were a better team in the first game. Yeah. And in the second game, unfortunately, Wales played into their hand. I thought Wales played the better rugby when they had the ball, but yeah. their inability to exit from their own 22 and give uh, Ireland that many shots in their 22 led them to be just ground down. Yeah. Drive, pick and go, pick and go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Under what um, circumstances? Then, okay, so if they see uh, uh, 15 try. I mean, but it was poor defence, but it was a good finish. Um, but then... Jordan Lama. Yeah. Yeah. But then, yeah, it was... I mean, they just watched it on the way in and fell asleep once on the train. Okay. So. What's it going to take for you to say, hands up, they've changed, I'm now happy uh, to... I, 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 well, <laughs> they, have, they have changed statement. a few things. Instead, instead, of, instead <laughs> of always doing a run around, they've now let them a pass out the back. Yeah. And with George North defending how badly he did on the weekend, they could have gone down his channel all day and made yards and maybe scored some more. But um, I don't know what was going on with George North, whether he was worried about Tompkins and his first time playing 13 outside him. But Do you think that was a factor? It, it can be if you do, if you have a relationship with your winger. It's it's a lonely place on the wing, but um, he made some shocking decisions. Um, but other, you know, I I haven't seen that much change. To be fair, they they kick the ball three times in the, from box kicks thirty meters out from the opposition's line, which is just brand yay rugby. Um, so yeah, look, they're still defensively very good. Um, I would like re referees in all games, please, referees. Can you referee the offside line? I'm not saying that Ireland were just offside. Everyone is offside at the moment. In that England game, everyone was offside. Marrow's never onside. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> Can we just get someone to ref the offside? So attacks have a chance yeah. of, of get, actually getting more than two passes in. Um, and then I think, I think uh, Ireland, have, they, they do so well at pushing the boundaries at break to, uh, breakdown time and don't get... Don't get reprimanded. How Why? Get, I, well, they never. I've got this big bug, bugbear about supporting your own body weight to allow people to clear you out, and, yep. and no one does it. <clears throat> and but refs just let it go. I mean, CJ Stander for all his praise. I mean, he, he should have got yellow card in the first game, and he got yellow card in the second game. But he, should, he left to a standing ovation. Yeah, he could have got yellow card. Or not, it's the best kind of yellow card. Uh, yeah, he could have. Job's he done. could have got yellow card a lot, bit, a lot earlier than that. So, but then I did set hope for this great sort of Six Nations with everyone coming into form, and it's not really turning out that way. So it could be suited to to Ireland. How good is CJ Stander? I'm toured with him. Um, well, first of all, he's a lovely guy, which yeah. always which always helps. Um, I think he's brilliant. I mean, look, he was somebody that um, you know, when he first came on the scene, um, you know, we obviously knew was a, was a real wrecking ball and played against him a couple of times. But it was only when I sort of saw him firsthand, and I think as he's got better and better, that you know his ability to carry, suck those runners in, you know, getting something like twenty odd carries a game, you know, his ability over the ball, I think something that he's he's. Um, really developed, mm. and you know he's such a he's a big man. He's very difficult to, to to shift, and I thought that you know he he knows exactly when to compete. I think a lot of people look at Omani as well, um, and they're not necessarily expecting you know. Uh, CJ to get in there. I, I think he, you know, I watched before the tournament, people were saying that actually Ireland's a team that's all picked on form, right? And then that's what the big thing that everyone was saying, you know, uh, Andy Farrell's coming. isn't it, when Murray's at nine? Yeah, and, 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 then, and then one of the, one of the stand-ups was, was Murray, but also one of the things was, was Stander wouldn't have been picked on form if he, you know, uh, or the way he's been playing. But actually, he's been their stand-up player in the last two games, I thought. As someone who likes a snazzy pair of white slip-ons and a little bit of disco in your hair... How did you get on with the men of Munster on that Lions tour, Omani and Stander and? Um, yeah, really well actually. I think um, again they probably had that that impression of them wanting to hate me before they, they met me. Um, I'm a great Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean one of those things that it's everyone just a standard was, norm. Every guest, <laughs> guest had on, every guest we've had on, I was like, oh, I want to punch you in the face. So I sort of sidestep. I know yeah. you want to hate me, yeah. but we're actually going to get on. I mean. Um, Peter Armani was interesting because he obviously was in for that first test yeah. um, and then obviously wasn't in. So he went from sort of starter to full bin juice operated with us. So that that week when the team got announced, we went out for a midweek dinner in, in some little... It was like a garden shed in the back of a restaurant in New Zealand. There was, right. it was myself... Um, 
Uh, Rory Best, <laughs> Rory must Best, have been Rory Best, Best mm. Henderson, um, low, low, and, and obviously Peter Marnie came out. But we also found out that he's a serial killer when it comes to his lawn. So there's a great story. What you don't realise is that he's obsessed about his lawn right at home. So he has this finely manicured lawn where every summer he will take it up, scarify it, do everything. He's got this massive amount of machinery that he hires. He borrows all the gear from the groundsmen at Munster. They come in and puncture the hole, and he's bought, built this pristine lawn, right, that nobody's allowed to go on. Right. But but what Sean O'Brien used to do was drive around to his house and take the gravel, gravel edging up and throw it onto the grass. <laughs> so when Peter went over it on the mower, he's <laughs> chipping stones everywhere. And the, the best way you could ever get back to Peter O'Brien was to dig up his lawn. Right. Because he, he just can't deal with it. Like a, he's like a serial killer about it. Wow. So um, that was... Was just an amazing insight you know you know this guy and all, all i knew him from was shouting mal mal and obviously like ruining england's grand yeah. slams um and then got just, to know that he was, Irish, he was down to earth yeah, yeah. down to earth a little bit mad obsessive about his uh, obsessive about his lawn i want to know whether we're looking at an ireland a france ireland grand slam to the last game. The stade wow. de france in the final in some ways, i hope so but as long as france win right <laughs> <laughs> do you Jim think Perth ireland are no good enough to beat england at twickenham because uh, they'll be well, Italy. I don't think we still haven't found out much about England really uh, in their two games. So um, you would say because they're winning, then yes, but uh, they're not offering that much in attack as long as you keep them down the other end. Right. But so easy, you're not easy, for turning. This lady is not do. for turning. No, I, I, th- I think England should have enough at home, but. On right now, if I had to pick one, I'd probably say they would do it at the moment. Okay. I quite enjoyed work just going. I quite do you enjoyed watch the- Ireland Wales. Yeah. Uh, I quite enjoyed the way Wales played, actually. Yeah. Uh, with Alan Joe trying to offload. I thought, heck you know, of a try, I thought, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Dan yeah. Bigger again, trying to offload guys, looking for those inside passes. You know, because when it's interesting, when you're playing two essentially blitz defences, yeah. there's one thing I watched straight away was to see whether, you know, Wales without Sean Edwards still had that bite in defence. But they were getting great line speed off the line. You know, Ireland, obviously, you know, retaining Andy Farrell is still having that line speed. So when you've got two blitz defence, a lot of time there isn't a lot of space, especially if you're offside. But what can do you in the eyes, if guys are running off the line, that inside ball yeah. or the ability to offload, if you yeah. get through it and I just quite enjoyed the fact they were trying to play that expansive rugby and I think there would have been another try when he got offloaded to Dan Bigger and he went back to that prop and threw it slightly behind him which is always yeah. hard for a yeah. big man with limited mobility yeah. in that, my entire career <clears throat> um, you know but I, I thought they, I, I quite enjoyed some yeah, of the stuff they I, played actually I, actually I actually thought Wales played, when they that was the problem is they just didn't have the ball enough because when they did they did look dangerous and they did look like they had a plan against that line speed in terms of coming back into it. You know, obviously Hadley Parks just dropped that ball over If Hadley line. scores, how much does that change the game? Well, I think it was just a, the right sort of time to actually it swing gone 19, it. Would it have gone 19... It would have gone... 15? Yeah, 19, 14 if they'd have kicked... The, yeah, which, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah kicked was it yes, Van der right first try after that? Or just slightly before that? I can't remember. Yeah. I, I like that one side. as well. You couldn't see that it was a try. Everyone went, prob- you know, they did bait it after the match. Yeah. So like, probability two angles, is a try. Like, two, two angles. <laughs> Which one? The, the mile? Yeah, yeah, the mile. Oh, oh, the mile. Oh, but he did land way short, but then because everyone was piling yeah. on, they've slid him over. So if you, you can't play Hadley Parks in real time, do you come to a different decision? Yes. Uh, well, two camera views, I thought it was a try, and then it's just that one camera view where you see his hand slip off it. Well, I didn't know the extent... So you know, def- my, my ex- definitely not a try. My extensive you- rugby knowledge was. I, I thought, obviously, you had to have downward pressure on the ball, mm. but now, obviously, you have to have within contact with the ball... You know, apparently there is a, there is a slight, yeah, a slight change. You can't break. Yeah. You can't break. break. Yeah, yeah they, can't, they said they changed it a little bit because so I, I saw don't them. think you can drop like lose contact with it and then no. catch up with it. Can you? Because that's that what would have been Tim what, Stimson in yeah. two thousand. Yeah. Because that because I watched them. Um, Cobus Reinach, who has wheels for days from Northampton, chase down a, a London Irish. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Got the ball inside, and the, as the guy's falling, the ball comes out, but he falls onto yeah. it. Is it's, that down with pressure? It was a penalty try anyway for a seatbelt tackle, but there you go. No, they didn't been. give it though. They didn't give it. Should no, have been. Should have been. Oh. Well, um, <laughs> that is interesting. So we think Wales. Uh, I, first I, I, said, I the was, championship. So it? obviously, I got pelters off the Welsh last week for saying with their with their Italy performance, and they were all because without those last two tries, it's it's twenty eight nil, and it's yeah. not half as impressive as forty two nil. But then they played a lot better, I thought, against. Ireland, that and Ireland lost. but but lost. But, ju- but that was purely on exits. They lost. They just couldn't get the ball. Whenever they were kicking it, they kicked it out on the full ones back in there. They dropped the ball on their own five, trying to play a little bit too much. The one with Hadley Parks at the back, and it's just give it 
you just can't give Ireland that much ball down there because they will grind you down with... Do we think, therefore, that obviously early days and it's going to take a bit more time, but Wales are expanding their game and, and going to be... <sighs> they look, I mean, look, I think... They're going to get there. My issue with it is that modern rugby, you can't escape the fact that it's a game uh, It's a game about the game line. Yeah. Right? There, there is an element of that requirement of power of getting from A to B as quickly as you possibly can, but both attack and defence, stopping that momentum or getting that momentum. But I think there are ways and means of doing it. I think gone are the days of people desiring this unbelievable kind of brand of rugby there's only a few teams in the world that can touch that and normally you know it's someone like New Zealand where you know even what they're doing is quite simple hands down the line without checking runners and they've been able to play with some expansive space well what Wales look like to me is they were trying to play that power game but also with the ability to, to get players to, to use their hands to fill those offloads to create opportunities when you're under when you're under pressure and there isn't a lot of space yeah you have to create that. And you'll see that the, the, the turmoil and, and problems of defence is caused by just a little offload by someone. Yeah. And it starts making you think about think about stuff. And actually, I think it's even more brave against Ireland because I remember when we played in the Grand Slam and at one point we were having to carry and basically dive at their knees because they were going to hold you up and shout more. Whereas I think, interesting, Wales did that to them in one yeah, play. Yeah. And actually, you know, Alwyn John's running between two players, albeit with a bit more space. Yeah. You know, you hit, hit him high, that's suddenly a turnover. So I, I thought they're looking, they're looking more creative. I've never I seen Alan Wynn look to offload as much as he did no, through that game. Delicious. It was literally every time. But how good is that? Yeah. He's like 600 yeah. years old and he's still getting back. <laughs> <laughs> he just reinvents his game. Quick word on Nick, Nick Tompkins. Um, do you ever watch the Squidge rugby stuff on YouTube? You should, it's brilliant. He, he does really good analysis on games. Really? I think I saw on YouTube but, but rugby was some tip made out that I was, <laughs> was I one of the biggest thugs in world rugby some little virgins put together some playlist or something like that and I'm like is that oh, you? What? going for a little bit of <laughs> what, mate? extra credentials I'm not, I'm not anyway, thug. the point is that he did the England-France game he sort of breaks it down for idiots like me but he just was making the difference for someone like George Furbank of in the premiership it's a game of metres whereas in international rugby it's a game of inches yeah. and he just showed three or four examples of Furbank just marginally off like when he dropped the ball he slightly overruns it in the premise you probably get away with that in international yeah. rugby you don't I just wondered whether the same applies for someone like Nick, Nick Tompkins who had the most amazing debut had 10 minutes to settle himself back on the bench came on full of adrenaline yeah. and in, in Dublin you just it's, it's a different game it's a different but, but it's a difficult thing. one for him because they just didn't have any ball so he never got the ball in the space that he had in Italy which we all know is, is a great attack a great feat um, but then, yeah, I mean, I thought Robbie Henshaw played yeah, really good, well, to be fair. I thought he was very good. He was all yeah. over the place. Um, he and went off yeah, with a concussion, he, didn't he, he as well? Yeah, I thought mm. and he just, he out, he out muscled him, really. I mean, he just seemed to shrug him a he bit. He was another guy from the Lions that I thought, having no, known him, was going to be like, because the, the, the way he carries, he carries way beyond his weight. Yeah. Because you know, he's not that big a guy, but he, he always penetrates, always gets uh, good yards. He was another great guy to, to, to yeah. get on with. Lovely bloke. But then, you know, with, with you know, Tompkins with the try, um, he, over, he sort of overrun it, but then Josh Adams is in nowhere because they've got the fullback who's shutting the gate. So there, there was a three on two defenders wise, and they're all sort of doing. Also, if you, you know if you accelerate that quickly across someone, yeah, but he didn't need to because he could have left. The, the, Josh Adams could have said, "I've still got him. Just make sure he doesn't step inside you," because uh, you know that you've got. Uh, I think sometimes you know because you know, it's one of the hardest things to teach players defensively you know to, to let someone have a lead keep your shoulder inside their shoulder because yeah. if you half go on someone like that that's where you get buried yeah. and, it, and it's it's one of those things where I think you're he, he did end him in the second half though it was one of the hits yeah he did oh, didn't oh he oh my god yeah he fully proper fully he, ended he made him. up for it yeah. but also I think for someone like that coming off the bench yeah. with you know with, with a game in, in a position where you know people are a bit tired there's a bit more space there's not so much pressure on you uh, you know anything you do is a bonus you're playing against a an Italy side, you're already in the lead. It's it's a little bit easier to do yeah, that. Course, it's a lot yeah, harder course, to, course, to, course. to to start um, and, and get out there. And I just think it's tough as well because you know there's no hiding in the international rugby, and you'll scrutinise more where you know he's had one one off the bench and suddenly put in at the deep end against Ireland away. And for me, that was the hardest place to ever go and play. Right, I hate. I it. mean, it's just it's just you know, ultimately he just didn't really step up defensively. I don't yeah. think uh, in attack he just never saw the ball. And then he made, he missed a few tackles, which then stand out, don't they? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he'll have time. Yeah, he's the kind I mean, of person yeah, Again, like, like anyone on this planet, you don't become a bad player overnight. It's just, it just. Quick word on the job, therefore, that Andy Farrell's done, and just second to that, 
looks good in a nice white shirt and a jacket. He, he? looks very really sexy. There's a sort of yeah. Davidoff yeah. advert coming yeah. through in the coach's yeah. box. Oh, it's so funny well you say that. Beard, he really does look good. I was sitting there, on my, on my, and I looked, and I thought, like, fucking hell, Andy Farrell is one good-looking yeah. man. I, I, he, I just, why has he been in a tracksuit for 30 years? He looked real sharp, didn't yeah. he? Could yeah. be the next James Bond. Here, James Bond. <laughs> yeah, 007. Yeah. Oh, uh, Shaker, not Stuart. Do you want line speed? Here, Blofeld. Fucking get your head down, you prick. Vodka Martini. Shaker, not Stuart. I'll have a vodka. Um, so, aside from looking smart, how well is his team play? <laughs> Would you just want to keep going? No, we just want to keep taking the piss. <laughs> Andy Farrell's it. Bond. But yeah. he did look so... He was... He looks good in the box. Mate, I, I agree he fucking with you. looks sharp as fuck. Yeah. He raised his game. So, so Ireland money, much? isn't it? That Ireland money coming yeah, through. exactly. Yeah, yeah new wardrobe. Yeah, tax breaks. Yeah. yeah. Go on. What's he done? Because uh, I mean, uh, actually, uh, we've seen so many try. To, he's trying to, to avoid the conversation. Yeah. We've done it. We've done it. Jury's still out. Yes, I think... If he's not really showing much of what he's tried to do, okay. um, but um, they're winning, so who cares? Yeah, he's you can see. Doesn't matter, does he? I'll tell you what he has brought is that mental, that sort of everyone when they get a small win or a yes, yeah, shift, yeah, geez, they're all over each other. Yeah, and that just annoys me. Um, more. But I think I do think though with, with that is that what what what's interesting if you look at like history with sporting teams and franchises and stuff, especially like the San Francisco 49ers guy. You know, actually his first year he had the same. Uh, winning to, to loss margin as the bloke got sacked but because it was his first year he essentially got it and then they won was it three Super Bowls in four years or four Super Bowls or whatever it was I think Andy Farrell you know, even if the game Bill Walsh not, is that yeah Bill Walsh yeah even if the thing's not going ahead those two games by positive attitude cement your cement your place give you that ability to carry on yeah. and, and I think that's quite a nice luxury so it's a great platform for him to build on and we'll see what he wants to do because I think there is some stuff there to be done. So I loves it when we go NFL. I know, Bill really 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 yeah. score yeah. takes care of itself no, if you're yeah. interested in the book. Um, one quick thing. Um, you were interested in it, but in the post-match interview, Bond Jr. was asked by Sonia on the touchline, how much are you looking forward to playing your dad? He said, no, not talking about that, not about that. But yeah. Oh, and again, is that, is that just not a thing? How can mm-hmm. it not be a thing? Do you not see the press conference? No. Well, when, when, like, because... Like, uh, uh, obviously, they're both like lovely people. So Andy's talking to like Alvin Jones, uh, Sexton, <laughs> sees see Owens like, all right, it goes past. It's like it, it must be really weird. I, I think it, it, it's, it's annoying when journalists ask that because I don't think it is a thing. Yeah. I don't think it would be a thing. But both, they're both, they're both, but, but for Australian, Australian, yeah. that is really, both really weird, weird to get your head completely around. the opposite because yeah. they're so used to it. And they're both ardent professionals as well. Of course, they are. I'm not yeah, but questioning no, no, that no, at no, all. No, but I'm not saying your dad and your son. But I just think that. You know, when you you know, didn't they play together at Saracens? Yes, they the one fifty. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a bit more of a different. When you have a sporting dynamic, you 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 and I couldn't relate to it. I just find it a bit funny when you beat your dad. It's like, no, we're never going to talk about. Oh, I'm going to get one over your dad. Imagine, imagine. Right. I, I just don't think it works like that. I just find. Do you it know, what? I love him to have gone all Kevin Key. I will love it if we beat him next week. No, but also, also, do you remember that Owen was put in that really unfortunate situation by that shithead journalist from during the World Cup who made out a load of stuff you know during that 2015 were very unfairly and, and and you know i just think i just think he's probably a bit on edge about that yeah. rightly so because people right. keep making comments about it and i would yeah. just be like he's my dad i love him he loves me but i want to beat yeah. them and they want to beat me and we'll fucking that we know that's an answer yeah but he's not like that is he that's okay. why that's why i'm, I'm just, not there we're going to talk about dad wouldn't be allowed anywhere it. near a team <laughs> <laughs> I dread to think. Imagine that. Yeah, yeah. That, would, that would be. He'd be like the Donald Trump of the rugby world. You'd be like one of those sort of David Hay pre-fight press conferences. Yeah, the two of you would be, go yeah, at each yeah. other. Um, well, that's what we've got to look forward to when the first fight comes. Wait, how long have you been until the first fight? Listen, that'll be announced pretty soon. Is it? Mm. Exactly. Uh, do we get? Do we get a <laughs> yeah, full stitch. press conference? Can we come? Weigh in can we be a part? Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. can we do like a behind the scenes? If you'd like to. Can I be like Ring Boy? Yeah, Joe Payne. I'll be Ring Girl. What well, tins can be. Yeah, uh... Ring Boy's in school. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was his nickname, wasn't it? Ring Boy. Uh... <laughs> Sai's woken up. Well done, Sai. <laughs> Super stuff. Uh... Do you want to talk England? Or is there not really a lot to say? Um, well, I thought I quite liked some of the stuff the back row did. Do you know, uh, in the men's Guinness Six Nations, six games, five men of the match performances from back rowers. Yeah, been I think if years. you turn the women, it's something like eight in... 12. Back row key. Yeah, okay. But back row, first of all, why yeah. has the back row become so much more... <sighs> well, no, I don't think it's become more. I think it's always been a key position, and especially in the conditions that we have played the last two games in. Or, well, obviously, you can go back to Japan, they were just on fire in, in terms yeah. of everything. For, every, every way we played suited their game and they were on fire. Um, but obviously on the weekend, it's always going to be a forward against yeah. the match in that. And, yeah. um, 
I, well, they, we've just got a good back row. I mean, I, I mean, I thought, options. for example, I thought you know when when we talked about the England France game, that we didn't fire we didn't fire any shots. You know, that's what the real disappointment was. We just didn't didn't bang anyone in defence. Didn't really make much of the gain line in, in attack. But I thought uh, obviously the, the, the conditions didn't really you know lend to that. But I thought Undernors was brilliant. Couple of times over the <laughs> ball, just... one of them was so. Quick. I know it's a bit. He wanted to sit his knee drop, but that was lightning speed. I thought he absolutely banged a couple of people. I thought Tom Curry was was yeah. was controlled the ball beautifully a couple of times at Na- number eight. Natural born eight, like Sergio Parise <laughs> at the back of the scrum. You know, I thought you know with great footwork, and I thought Lewis Ludham. You know, he added a real you know um, determination every time he carries. Yeah, he, when he carries the ball, he's got that speed. Leg pump. Gets in, yeah, he, he got gets a couple of turnovers. It. You know, that's something that when I first went to Northampton, you know, he did a lot of work. I mean, <laughs> nothing to do with me, but a lot of work with uh, Heinrich Brusso about over the breakdown stuff. We did it kind of religiously after training, and his game to the point where he was not necessarily getting those turnovers. Now consistently gets you turnovers as well as hits you in in, in attack. Yeah, uh, sorry, hits you in defence and attack. So I thought they were they were very very good, and they added. Um, you know, they, they were the difference between the two sides on on that day. I felt. Yeah, Do you go along with that. Yeah. Yeah, but I think, Kudos. I think that sort of whether you need your back, you get the guys who stand up in your back row probably will win you the game in terms of just nausing breakdowns and allowing you to get that that line speed, getting those turnovers, getting penalties that you can then knock over. I mean, if you look at it, for, you know, fans missed a couple that he should definitely have got. So we should have been a bit. It was interesting that the hole in the T bit, wasn't it? You know, With Chloe, Chloe asked me if anyone, you know, does anyone practice that? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, but, yeah. But it's interesting because he went with Ellis to start with, Ellis, and then he missed it, and then he went with his mate Jamie George, that and he got was, it. Was my my was role with Johnny? Yeah. What? I was Johnny's team. Oh, you were, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Brian Morris used to do it as well. Rob Andrew, he built mm. sand castles of sand, and then you were a few boys. Never ring, look ring at boys, you, you should you? never look at the ball. As, is that right? You, got, you used to bury your head, didn't you? Yeah. Because if you don't know when he's going to kick it, you're not going to let go of it. But also, wouldn't you put your hand on the front of it so it kicked it out? You did it in Wellington, didn't you? So if you just hold the top, it's never going to fall over. Then it's not making any difference to him when he kicks it. And if you don't take your heart, because if you take your finger off, it could fall over. Yeah, because I used to just put my head down, so I never knew when he was going to hit it. And then mm. I did the same. I, remember, I did the I same could thing. Guarantee <laughs> I could guarantee <laughs> that little thing you used to sit on top of the no, ball. Didn't, didn't he try and kick it in the face? Yeah, 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 I used lols. to put my nose on the tip of the ball <laughs> like that, and I would close my eyes. Um, who else was really good? I oh, thought it was interesting. Good. I thought it was interesting about uh, you know the obviously uh, Willie Hines. People got into about making those those the repeated errors on the box kick, and yeah. then Ben Young's coming on and Actually, kicking slightly differently. There was that ten minutes but where it, I mean, it went yeah, out five I, times I that, that It was, in, but this then goes back to having a bit of nerves in the fact that you don't know what the wind's doing because literally in the stand in the first half, I could watch a box kick and it would fly normally. Then it box kick two minutes later, and it, you could just see it just stop in the air. So it was one of those where you've just got to take the the high ground and just sort of go right. It's going to be safe, yeah. But it's not, and it's never going to go out in the full, especially on the ones where you're going long down. Mm. I mean, if they they're never going to run it back in that no. conditions. So. I thought it was a bit unfair. I just meant that yeah. I just thought it was a bit unfair the criticism because it's very difficult, you know, with Elliot Daly's cross field as well going straight out. Yeah. It looked like, especially in that Edinburgh, you you and I both play. It it, sw- it, it sw- like, s- swirls around. So one minute the ball's going that way. I mean, like vault vault of- in the top stand, it was hammering that way, and then lower down, it was hammering the other way. And uh, one you, of the kicks, they, win, it was just ridiculous. They did an up and under to start with the first one. It went blew all the way back, and then someone did it, and it fucking went it was, to the other yeah, end yeah, of yeah. the field. You're like, well, how's that working? Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it hit the Gulf Stream. Yeah. Um, <laughs> quick word for George Cruz, the snoozer, the running of the line out because things line out actually went yeah. extremely well. Yeah. Look, we snatched. don't often give plaudits to the. Uh, the piano. Like you always need a really horrendous weather day to give it. Give it. Yeah, exactly. I've got to say, I did. I, want, I mean, I'm not going to mug anyone off because it's hurting me. But there was some the commentary. Oh, so dry so across the, the two games I watched. It was absolutely dry city. I mean, I just don't know where. I mean, if, if that's want, where rugby wants to go, and John fine, but it's so dry. Where rugby is? Do you want to do that now? Do you want to do this now? What? What? what should we play? We play a WhatsApp message. <laughs> Oh God! Is that a, yeah? Fuck! I forgot I even sent that. I've really got to stop incriminating myself. I just yeah. yeah. I just thought, loves the voice. Note. Loves the voice. No, no. I just thought it's like you know they talk about the piano movers and the piano shit. All these uh, fucking cliches. Yeah. It's like but, uh, but then sometimes the piano movers can be, uh, piano shakers can be piano players. Yeah, can, they can be allowed what? to play. It's like shut up. Yeah, not Honestly. encouraged though. It's, <laughs> it's like, like it is like it's like Jonah Lomu rugby. Yeah, it was. I'm not like, built. That's yeah. a maternity ward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's going to feel like a Sherman tank there. It's like, <laughs> a, like sh- a demented oh, it's, it's, it's like, 
I just I listened to it and I think we're trying to educate people on the game. And I thought it was interesting, Brian, you know, Brian Moore when he when he commented, you know, he'll explain what quite quickly what what's being said, yeah. even if it's not that clear, because he's fucking aggressive. Um, but I just I don't know. I just didn't think there was that cl- much, much clarity on it. But going back to this, that's why you said about George Cruz and the, the other piano player. I thought he was great, but he's an absolute. You know, byproducts of Steve Borthwick. It's like he's basically George Cruz is, is Steve Borthwick's illegitimate son. Right. That you wouldn't want to bring at Christmas. You wouldn't want to wheel that out. You keep Cruz well behind. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially, he's a real aficionado with um, with Marin. He's always been the heartbeat of running that, that running that uh, line out. And he's so integral. And I thought in weather like that, where to be honest with you, when he threw the ball in, there was a few you know question yeah. marks. I thought England to, to win the amount of ball they did, put the pressure they did, was was pretty impressive in that yeah. in that particular weather. You know. Um, and can we have a quick word on our, I'm going to say new friend, but Ellis off the bench. Yeah. I want to talk about him in the, um, in the interview in a moment or two, but just as a rampaging ball of energy. I thought he was going to start. Did you really? I thought he should have started because of the way he played last time when he came against France. I thought he was aggressive. I thought he carried the ball well. I thought he got over the gain line. I thought he wanted to hit people. Um, but he obviously didn't get a start, and I don't know nothing about selection, <laughs> so or rugby for that matter. But um, he, I thought he was brilliant actually, and I think he, I love how he tried, he scored, and he was so angry when yeah. he scored. And what, so what did something uh, happened there? I don't know. You know what, Ellis? I don't know. Someone, mm. I don't know. Some, you know, I don't know. Yeah. He, it, you always feel that you don't want any naked flames around. Right. <laughs> Ellis, <do you? laughs> yeah, yeah stand well nah. back. Someone we took to say, don't you want to you want your prop to be angry? Yeah, I love it. I love it. I think he's yeah. a good, but it's just funny when the only problem is, is that if you, when you're that fiery, when someone comes in to congratulate you, and you're fending your own teammates <laughs> yeah. off, yeah. chinning people as you're like seeing <laughs> and his shirt sort of ridden yeah. up yeah. and everything. Yeah, but he, he I thought, no, I think he, you know, for me. Watching his, you know, and Eddie Jones said it at the end of the press conference, he was one of the project players. Yeah. You know, I watched him in that final week against South Africa and some of the technique bits and doing his explosive power, his ability, like with his feet uh, to change direction, yeah. he, how hard he carries, yeah. how hard, you know, how, you He's know. another leg pumper yeah. as well. And he, he, had a, he had a good bump on Adam Hastings yeah. as well, I think, didn't he? And he wants to, hit, and, he, and I think in defence as well, it's something that he wants to yeah. work on to really start hitting people as well. Like he, he does do that, you know, he gets that real physical edge. You know he's never going to take a backward step and he's like a real emotional you, heartbeat. Yeah. You've got a slight bit of speed in you as well. Yeah. So yeah. Makes it helpful. You'll get to people. We're going to come on to, I suppose, the... <laughs> part two of Alice Genge uh, in a moment or two but just a quick reminder you are watching and listening to House of Rugby on Joe together with Guinness and the Alex Payne alongside the Hask and the Tins still to come we're going to try and get a handle on the French uh, we're going to look at the art of the interview but first of all if you haven't subscribed to Liquid Football what have you been doing have a listen to this the intensity they play out early on in the season and it doesn't make a lot of change does it? No. he plays the same team pretty much week in week out it's got to be having an effect on them. Yes, because it's not just about picking the same team and, and the effect that can have on the players, mm. but it's that he seems to be sticking with players who aren't necessarily putting the, mm. the performances in. That's mm. that's just his yeah. way, isn't it? Yeah. But then like the flip side to that is they was in the same position last season. So you yeah. think drawing him experiences, yeah. but as you, we both know in dressing rooms, mm-hmm. when you start getting the momentum, especially this stage of the season, in recent weeks, whether they've been the first team to play first on that weekend or the Friday night or the other team is because yeah. now the TV schedules get put differently. So yeah. someone plays before you, you start getting nervous and it's like, yeah. oh, bloody hell. Yeah, Especially when you've been up there most of the se- or, or pretty much all of yeah. last season and most of this season. When it starts wobbling, you know, it's hard to, it's hard yeah. to get out of it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> that is Kelly Cates with uh, James Tompkins and Steve Sidwell on Liquid Football, which is out every Monday. Don't forget the Facebook group. We've got 25,000 of you in there now. Please, will you be nice to each other? And actually, you know, I occasionally have a little look in there. It'd be great fun to come and play, but are we frankly... Gonna, are we going to send out rings? E-L-E. Everybody love yeah. everybody. Yeah, let's do that. Well, House of Rugby. H-O-R-E-L-E. I promise it's nauses. Horelli. It's nauses, Horelli. man. When you put too many nauses, it's like that, you put too many nauses in a barrel, yeah. they just gnaws each other to death. Yeah. And then when you get them out, you're left with a super gnaws. Yeah. <laughs> so if there's any they, people who are bad, they bled. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, like you know, out of um, Quantum of Solace. Yes. Yeah, they, yeah, and he talks about how you get rid of rats on an island. And you put them all in a barrel, put coconut on the lid, they all go in and the rats oh, get hungry and they start eating each other. Then you've got rats that hunt rats. Right. You put gnaws in there, they become gnaws hunters. They turn yeah. on each other and they just got a, a, a 
deluge of noors, a melange of noors. Right. That's why they get aggressive. A melange of noors. Yeah. There's a t-shirt. <laughs> it's a t-shirt, isn't um, it? I can't go in there because it just get the noises too excited. And then, you know... Oh, God, just dip in. I can't, I can't. Just dip in. I can't. Just dip in and say, hey, everybody, well, see what goes well, well, By that point, they'd be all fine against it and then there'd be a fresh rack yeah. and they'd all just fucking yeah, go for that. Yeah, the problem yeah. is they'd come at they'd me. they come at you. And my, Can my I just say, with 25,000 of you in there, you're, you're not all rats, but there are there are one no, or two. you said rats, there were noises. We're just using rats as an example. Yeah, yeah, we didn't call our fans rats. Lovely people. We suddenly got 25,000 to 22 of you left in there. But which was super noises. But super noises. If you're badged, if you're a badged like super fan of that, you're probably a massive noise. Uh, don't forget our match pint game. More of that to come at the end of the show. It was that, a actually. very good week for some of us. Not Even such well. a good week for others of you. I well, I missed the first I did round. Right. I didn't know you were about to play it. It's about the I week. I did all right. You just got your. Uh, I would have actually, if Italy hadn't scored got, that you, try at the end, I'd have almost had perfect points. Come on to that in a mo. Um, you can actually win this week as well. There's a quiz in there, so get in there and win yourself a Guinness. C- can I just say something? You're talking about um, nauses. Um, I feel like f- for these weeks we could do with a food platter. I would be a snack platter. Wholly subscribing to that. Yeah, do you do think you Guinness could bring platter? us some pies? Are there Guinness pies and Guinness crisps? I think I'm quite good. I'm actually pie, really right, this hungry. is where we need you. Nor's in the Facebook group. We might have called you rats. <laughs> why don't we, actually why need don't we do like um, TMS and ask for a cake every week? Yeah. Yeah, That's I think it. we should do Readers, that. Readers, send in your cakes. Don't cut this out, yeah. Si, either, you fucker. You know, <laughs> please, we want a food platter every week delivered. We fill most Tuesday evenings. What do you, 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 you like? A little bit of fruit? We could... We could get Rate. Yes. Some recycled uh, mini tortillas yeah. from Denim Si t- and half a packet Denim, of... Yeah. Denim Si. Chorizo, chorizo wraps. Oh, lovely. Um, we could value... We you could You could make them in nauseous... Your badge of your club or something. Oh, no, no, actually, no, no. Um, I think the don't reason make we don't handmade have food- ones. No, don't make hand, don't anything handmade because one of the people at Wasps, um, Wasps Northampton, sent in some brownies, and, and I part. You all started giggling. You no, know, <laughs> no, we gave them to uh, one of the lads. He bit into it, and they were full of hair. So I'm not accepting anything that's been homemade <laughs> from any of you sickos. I want like <laughs> I want vacuum packed gear that I will eat, and we'll, and we'll find. Right, and it's obviously approved. we will recycle the plastic. Well, I'd be a paper... Yeah, whatever. Paper right. Uh, come and play the match point game. You can win Guinness this week well, with the why quiz. Why with your connections we just get... Did somebody say just eat? Oh, oh yeah, shit. Just eats. Fucking hell, I other, forgot other, about uh, that. Other are available. Other are available. Deliver who? Deliver who? Yes, yeah, please. He's done that again. Am I? A lot of recycled material in this show. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Right. I've had two We've officially in burned Hask out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Um, we've got to into that we've, mode where he's just twitching. Get Joe Marl, those tortillas are rank. Get Joe Marl about it, he's way funnier. <laughs> we've got to spend. That is true. I wanted to do a thing actually. He keeps saying, "Yeah, yeah, I'll be there next week," and then saying, "No, sorry, I'm really busy. I can't." I wanted to do a thing where every week, you know, like fucking Matt Damon. Yeah. yeah. I want to do next week's guest is Joe Marlowe. Look forward to seeing him in there, and you just have tins of you again. And yeah, next perfect. week's guest is Joe Marlowe. Um, actually, well, he's busy at the moment, but he'll come and play at some point. We have a special announcement: House of Rugby is heading to Cardiff. Mm. God help us all. We're going to be there on Tuesday, the third of March, ahead of England Wales. We stay down. Do you want to start talking up the Welshies now? I, I think I have. We were just yeah, that's very true. Okay, good, yeah. We got security though. We got special guests. Do you think we're gonna be like um, in Blues Brothers? We'll be like up behind a cage. Yeah, I hope so. Because yeah. you can't leave those cameras out because they'll go. They'll go missing straight away. <laughs> you know, I did a game in Claremont for <coughs> where all the camera equipment went. <coughs> yeah, my bag went, yeah. the coat yeah. went, yeah. the camera equipment was going. I guarantee, if we stood the there long enough in that room, there'll be nothing left. Yeah. We'll just be standing there naked. <laughs> I'm joking again. again. <laughs> again. Lads, lads, lads. Um, uh, details of Cardiff is going to be on the Facebook group, but there are only 22 of you in there. Yeah, we're all so angry with each other. Tickets. Uh, we've got lots of, lots, lots of tickets available, uh, and they'll be live at five o'clock. What are they fighting Wednesday? about in the Facebook group? I don't know. We'd love to see you there. Don't be arguing about how many on. people like me. Back to the Guinness Six Nations. Yeah. Quick word on France, Italy. Anyone? I did say my rugby knowledge. I called it tonight that I thought that Italy were going to win. That, 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 well, I said that they, were give, well, they gave a better, fu- better fight than they did, didn't they? No. They, were they did play way better. Yeah, okay. But there were a lot of lot of errors from France. But for, no, I think that's doing Italy a di- uh, disservice. I thought they they carried so much better. Jake Pelledri carried so much better. They played some Me- brilliant rugby. Moving, in the second half. moving. He's an absolute machine, that Pelledri, oh, no. isn't he? Yeah. I never got to play against him. He's like the absolute leg driver of leg drivers. Yeah. Um, he, and he just like throws his <laughs> off. Uh, and then. Is it Minotti that they yeah. moved from fullback to wing and he's so Minotti. much better on the wing when he... Minotti. 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 Min
Um, he's got sick We're feet and he's, and he's quirking. <laughs> Uh, they just they just showed it. <laughs> I've tried to say something else, but I didn't. No, you didn't. Just came out wrong. Get, get yeah. grip. Sorry. Um, yeah, I thought they they were so much better. They actually carried with some conviction. Looked like they had a game plan as well. They didn't just try and run everything all the time. They did kick a bit. And... Um, France doing that? Are they teetering? Are they going to lose in Cardiff? Um, or, uh, do, uh, well, is the Cardiff, Renaissance Cardiff, real? Yeah, I, I think it is. I think you saw. Uh, snippets of how good they are. Dupont, yeah. I thought, was excellent again. He is proper player. He is proper. He makes so much happen around quality. Um, so I think they'll go to they'll go to Cardiff with with belief. And yeah. then you, they've just got to show it. I think you'll see their defense step up again, and then they've they've got to put both together their attack and their defense. Yeah. Right, a quick word on the women's Six Nations. Jess Breach didn't let us down. I know. Uh, she's got a long way to go to get to fifteen. Though. Well, there's still time. <laughs> 53-0, England beat Scotland. Did you see that game? At Murrayfield oh my God, in so a blizzard. A proper, proper so blizzard. Cold, <laughs> when, did, um, when did you call off a game like that? Well, it was 60, 60 minutes. If you get 60 minutes, the results down. Yeah, what I mean is, is that, like, when you look at that and go, it's like when they try and force that premiership games out here where you're, like, having to draw the lines on and, like, move snow. Isn't that all quite the, good fun? All the, no, all the players <laughs> like that, please cancel it, please cancel it, please cancel it. Like, when you get, it starts really raining, it's like, because they say static water, isn't it? If you get, if you, there's yeah. actually laying water on the field because you get tackled and your face Drown. gets, we had that at yeah. the mall once, I literally, <laughs> drinking water to, <laughs> yeah, because you, 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 it's like a bog. Did you ever have a game called off? hours um, before it was meant to be played and was, what is that like when you've got 30 uh, guys who are you had a frozen pitch one hmm. at the, I think at the rec end at Gloucester what do you do yeah, with 23 we should, have done, we should have had called off it was like with the wind at Gloucester it was completely frozen like minus 20. we just wanted to play the game because it was against a French team so we were like sort of guaranteed that they won't turn up if it's like yeah. wind chill of minus 15 or something and then Dave Atwood stood on one of their heads and they all got fired up and then they beat us I think I did that game I remember that Yeah, that's when he got banned didn't he shatters after, yeah because yeah. Yeah. that was when he was just in his stride with England and yeah. was like ready to kick on and he got banned and ruined he it he got um, too smug he did this smug smug on very good at DIY Built he's brilliant. House. Smugwood. Yeah, you, start, you know when his first tour, he had an ergonomic phone case that we all looked at because he was like comfortable in his hand. And we were all going to Vegas. And where are you going? He went, I'm going on a yoga retreat with my missus. <laughs> we were like, you're the smuggest man we've ever met. <laughs> and then and then, uh, and then, he stamps on someone's head and I was like, actually, you're a bit of a mad, tough, <laughs> smug, <laughs> lunatic yeah. man. Lovely bloke. But he's awesome at it. Yeah. Um, 53 nil in Scotland. I mean, basically, the argument now is that because England have beaten France, they're, they're rolling down the hill to the Grand Slam, which is not a great look. But it is what it is at the moment. It is what it, it is what it is at the moment. It, it needs time to. Yeah, you know, England are bed in. the first, were, well, the first team to go professional, weren't they? And they put money into it, and you're yeah. going to see those results until the others do the same. Well done to Emily Scarrett, who is now England's all-time top point scorer. As well, we'll try to get her on that the show. That was only yes. a matter of time. Sure. Yeah, phenom. Um, right. Um, <laughs> You're very serious. Right. Um, well, someone needs to around here. I keep working with you two clowns. Talk to is enough to crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you can send us better to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. um, I'd like to spend the rest of the show discussing events off the field at Murrayfield at the weekend. Where would you like to start? What about the interview with Sonia McLaughlin and Eddie Jones? Did you see that? Yeah, I quite liked it. So apparently Sonia's come in for a lot of criticism about it. I don't understand why. Well, I would second that. Um, she's supposed to try and get answers, and I thought she did it in a really nice way. She flattered him. Yeah. She literally tried everything she could possibly do to get out. You're a very intelligent man, very intelligent man. Yeah. Um, and then she did, ultimately. Yeah. He says, because I want to. Yeah. Which, what, well, Hass says every, he, he yeah. does it because he wants to. Um I thought it was a very good interview with Eddie. Yeah. I unfortunately must have, because I, I saw the a first part where she asked him about, um, a question about something and then said, I'm not going to comment on that. I've got absolutely no comment. And it started to get a bit fiery. Then I must have left the room because I didn't see the, the obviously the preceding the part, of the rest of it. So, I, so what happened then? Yeah. In that? So, cause she, she, well, I, no, it's just, it ends with a smile. And yeah. he eventually yeah. says, oh, well, I do it because so I'm... So basically she it. said, why do you do the things you do? Yeah. Like, why do you say the stuff yeah. that you say in the media? Yeah. And he's like, well... He he went. He went. Well, and I said, well, I went off. She said, well, yeah. you know, you could just say nothing. Straight and so he went, I'm going right. to take your advice. And I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. 
And she's like, well, no, that's not really helpful. Why do you say the things? He goes, look, I'm going to take your advice and say nothing. And then it sort of rolls on that way. And then eventually he goes, right, okay. because I like it. But he quite likes that kind of thing. I mean, he'd much rather have a bit of a joust. And I, a... I, I think he does. But I, I think what's very hard is, remember, you, when, you, when you're a head coach, yes, mm. you can push the boundaries and stuff, but you've got responsibility. It's like I sat through many press conferences where what I wanted to say was completely polar opposite to what came out of my mouth. And, and you know... I've seen that hit with him with players that he didn't want to select or hasn't selected. You know, we all know the reason, but you can't go out and say the reason because it causes more trouble than it's worth. And, you know, because, you know, you have accountability for what you say, but the media then can do what they want with it. And context is lost. Everything's heard third hand. So you, ha so you have to do it. So you can stoke fires up, say, we want to be the best team. We're going to do this. Bring brutality. Which, you know, I... Th <laughs> Uh, you know, people talk about, you know, get very upset about health and safety. But, I mean, if you think rugby's not a brutal game, then you're fucking, yeah. I don't know what, what planet you're on. Um, <laughs> but I think it's quite nice that you admitted it because I said it. It's like, yeah, I did say it. I can say it. And I like winding yeah. people up because look how all he has to do is say one thing and everybody comes running around like ants. I think it's quite nice he admitted it. And I think she pushing him fine. Yeah. He, he's been around for long enough to know. I mean, yeah, he's and, been around and, 15, well, 20 it, years it, ago. He knew how the game was played. It just shows as a journalist, do it in a, in a. She did it in a pretty respectful way, yeah. pretty well mannered. And then he responded off the back of it with a smile, like said, because I liked to, and gave a smile yeah. because that's what we all wanted him to actually say because he just admits that he likes to fire people up. And I think, I think a lot of people get. Um, you know, a lot of fans get upset with with way, way journalists or, or interviewers do stuff post match. I think it's interesting in rugby where why Sonia gets that because you know she is one of one of the, mo the main female reporters and. Yeah. You know, it was we found in our own <laughs> Facebook group. People just get very upset about stuff like that, and I think it's quite nice to challenge. You've got as a journalist, your job is to challenge, albeit in a polite, a polite yeah. way. And I think, yeah, I mean, I mean, you can if you went out, if she'd have done that in a different way and gone, no, come on, stop being, then he would have just got angry and he wouldn't have. Yeah, so he probably walked off. But yeah, she did the right way. I was trying to explain to my kids about trolling and social media this week. Twenty five, thirty years ago, people had thoughts in the pub, and it was a thought, and it was gone. Yeah. Now people have. Uh, stupid yeah, thoughts and they type them out and they send them to you and it's it's the same it's exactly the same idiots but they just got a way of directing them to you yeah ignore yeah. move on I didn't, yeah, no, I didn't. But I, you, I, can, I, you cannot be no, all, all things that. to no, a man no, but I hate, or women you know what, you know what I really hate we, we can come on to the next part so when I respond to people on the odd occasion, I responded about Ellis's thing. People just say, "I'll oh, just move on." You're fueling it. Yes, there is an argument. You can take the Co Kate Moss approach, right? Getting caught behaving badly, even though it's all over the papers, right? And then not say saying anything about it, just ignore it, say nothing. Or you can call people on their bullshit. Or and, and some people say you don't need box you, but I think it's important. I think that. A lot of people used to, we would get disgruntled. So I sent you a WhatsApp message, right, about something like the, the coverage I felt of the weekend's rugby, right? I didn't put that on the internet. My first reaction wasn't to do that. It was to call up two people that I sit on a job with. We talk about rugby and, and commentary and different guys and to make a complaint. Mm. My first reaction wasn't to, co to, comment, to contact all those commentators and tell them that because I'm not an arsehole. I think when people do comment you should be entitled to call them back. And I think the world is full of too much bullshit where people aren't being called on it, where people are indiscriminately walking around thinking they can say how, they, say how things are, act how they want, do things when, it, when, when it's very impactful. And I, th I just think it's inappropriate. I love what Ellis did because he, he says what we all say. I want to come back to the Ellis thing in a moment. I just want to pick up the Rob Kitt, and this dovetails with Eddie Jones. Rob Kitson wrote in The Guardian, it's about time that rugby woke up to the self-inflicted damage being done by some in the game who should know better, not least coaches who overlook the link between their pre-match rhetoric and deteriorating relationships elsewhere. Does Eddie saying, right, we're going to go and smash them, or the Scots are niggly, or whatever it might be, invite the booing and the bottles and the gestures that England received no, on Saturday? England versus Scotland, Calcutta Cup, has been built on that for what well, since, like, since Banner before I I played, and you know we we even when we went to Wales that time we had they smashed a window on our bus, so it's not it's not like it's a new thing. I, I think well, I think Rob Kitson is you know I, I've got a lot of respect for him. I just don't think he's sitting there. I think a, a whole society, I'm not going deep, a whole society on fundamentals of what we think was acceptable across the board mm. for every demographic. Those and boundaries and on, on stuff are being worn away. People are doing stuff that we have to just open any WhatsApp group, sorry, WhatsApp group, and see people doing stuff that you would 
have never seen before. People f- doing stuff in the street they shouldn't be doing. People fornicating. People throwing. The standards of people across the board have generally gone to shit. So somebody. Do you think they have? Or do you yeah, think they've always just been doing I think they've always they've been. been no, 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 they have. But I also think because it's now readily available, people think they can get away with stuff like that more, and just think that social standards have slipped. I think I've never been. You know, like when we played Wales, my 2007 bloke. People were throwing shit at the bus, swearing. Bloke head butted the bus. We've talked about it. Yeah, yeah. People throwing bottles. It's always happened. It's got nothing to do with that. Okay. I just think that. People think they can get away with it. It's appropriate, and you know, people, journalists like rugby journalists, have just got to write stuff about rugby. There's no, yeah. it's, it's, hard, it's hard. I mean, it is quite hard that they've got. To fit, they they have to fill yeah. inches, and when you have nothing really to talk about on the field because of what the weather did to it, all you can talk about it off it is the weather. But, but I mean, what, pre-match language and everything else, and then you know. <clears throat> I mean, I read. Well, I read half of. Stephen but it's not James lying. But it's, 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 it's not lying because you know uh, Scotland are niggly. Yeah. They're a tear up last thing. Last time they beat us, they all took the shirts off and called us all the c word. They made bad, didn't they? Yeah. Right. Well, that's not a problem. But I didn't. Yeah. I don't hold it personally against them. You know, they probably think I'm a dick. Which is unfair. Um, but I just don't think that has any correlation to it. I think it's always a hard fought game, but you're respectful people. Yeah. Rugby fans are separating themselves by being able to drink in the stands, be able to behave, be able to have that kind of that chat. Throwing bottles and stuff is 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 an anomaly yeah. f- from stupid people who think that that's acceptable what rules So are rugby probably, fans you know, still better than football fans? No, I don't think it's about better. I don't think you should ever say that. Really. Yeah, I, 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 so I said it's a terrible argument. I'm not. I'm. I'm literally no, I'm Wright, waiting. Ian Wright said. It. Ian Wright. We had a long debate about it in the jungle about it. He said like every time you know people always talk about oh you know you watching a real man's game and everything else. And he said look, first of all, he doesn't condone all the fake the fake diving and everything else. But he said whenever, whenever he goes to watch a rugby game, the first thing people turn around and say is oh you know watching a real sport are you do you know and they, they are just as hostile Morally in a boring. different way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. I, and I think that you, know, you, you could argue that going back to football and then separating fans is, <clears throat> leads more to what how they how they are and, and what it leads to because you get mob mentality whereas if you're dispersed yeah there might be, you might be yeah. three of you I don't know I mean I'd actually quite fair. like it without a bottle throwing if people at Twickenham were slightly more hostile when, when, when other they can't teams go mouths full of prawn salad. That's what I mean. It's hard to shout <laughs> you know, when you're the, chewing the, on a, a cucumber. Cashmere and scarf. <laughs> and bar, barber's done up too tight. They would, they would have to put down a glass of champagne. No, but that's what I quite like that. Well, that's one thing I don't understand, right? You go to Wales, everyone on the street is mugging you off, right? Blokes head butting bus. The, the, the extremes of actually throwing and interaction, but gesticulating, I've got no problem with. Booing, I've got no problem with. You're Scotland, same thing. Everyone's booing and everything else. I don't, but booze, who cares? It's quite yeah. nice. You know, it's quite nice. Throwing bottles, absolutely unacceptable. Throwing shit, full stop, is unacceptable. Yeah. And, all, and what's interesting enough, as I said to Ellis, we'll come on to him, but I said, imagine you throwing a bottle at someone else. Because I can tell you what, if I was playing now and someone threw something and I could see him in the stand, I'd go and bang him out or pull him over the stand. No, you um, a, a fucking a hundred. You would not. I promise to God. I promise to God. Why? Why is it? Why would if someone threw a bottle at my head, I'd pull him over the boundary. I might not punch him, but I pull him over. I, I saw when Elliot Daly played against Gloucester, he slid into a. Uh, I think I've told the story before. Oh yeah. I slid know. into the, the the back of the wall, right, and two pints fell on him, and a third guy fucked the pint over his over his face, right. I didn't see it, but I promised to God if I'd been there, I would have pulled him over and I, I would never have apologised and I never would have said sorry because, you know, it's unacceptable. Just because we're held to a higher moral standard yeah. for some fucking bizarre reason, which is unfair, but, yeah. I, I, I don't agree but, with it. But you, you would have been hauled over the coals for that. Man, he's just lost two points. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a good point. But, <laughs> but I, <laughs> so he thought the best way of doing it was throw you, the third you, one away. You I, got into serious trouble for that. But, uh, you, but, are, you are, whether you like it or yeah. not, you are obliged to... Stand by better standards. Oh, but I, I do hold myself better standards, but I'm also not a let shit slide. That is the this, that's the big problem. I think you know, you know like Ari Cantar, the bloke mugging him off, and karate, five years ago, yeah, him, uh, him mugging him off and karate kicking him to the head. That's a bit niche. I'm talking like like for like thing. Like Tom's Tom um, Ben Stokes, <laughs> right? Yeah. That bloke mugging him off and him calling him whatever he had to do, and the the camera zooming in and had to apologise. Bullshit. The guy was rude. He called him on it. End of story. I've got no problem what Stokes did. Uh, it, it, you know, the guy was a prat and he thought he could insult an, an international cricket player. The it's fucking different. camera shouldn't have zoomed in. But it's not, it's not that's how it should be, though. You should be able to go, right, just get him out. Yeah. 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 Do you remember Trevor Brennan clambering into the crowd uh, yeah. on a Toulouse game? Yeah, see, that's niche. That you can't, like, you can't, like... Well, it's because his, his dad was mid-fight, so I he had to go help his dad. Yeah, I, wouldn't indisc- I wouldn't indiscriminately go and fight someone. I'm not, yeah. I'm not Rocky Bow, but I don't think I'm a tough bloke. I just mean that if something happened like that and if someone threw something, I'd pull him over the thing. But I think at Twickenham, at least, where my original point went before we went on a, on a segue, was we should be more hostile. 
It's all the right. only place you go where yeah. everyone's like, probably good show. And then it, where, where all these other teams have got a monopoly on hostile environments. I don't understand. You know, it, it, the cricket and the crowd are fantastic and they cheer, they, 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 they cheer <laughs> and they're brilliant. And it's for me, it's my most favourite place to ever go and play rugby. But I reckon they can make it way harder. But we just seem to be a bit apologetic because albeit if you put the St George's flag up, you're immediately the leader of the BNP. So you've got to be very careful. But I think we could do a bit better job. Do you not think or not? Yeah, uh, just about, I think if you look at the general basis of the people at Twickenham and then the people who are in Millennium and who are in a slightly different... Well, he, OK, here's a new idea, right? It's your bomb if you, on if the stand tr- story, isn't it? Yeah. Knock out capitalism in the UK for if you're, 50 years. If, it's meant to be. If, you're, if you're a fan... Right, here's a, here's a, uh, here's a uh, quid pro quo. If you're a fan and you didn't really cheer very well and you didn't really do anything and add the atmosphere, but your first reaction post-game was to get on Twitter and social media and contact one of the players the same <laughs> shit, you haven't fulfilled your job as a fan with the one requirement was not to tweet, not to post, not to take photographs, not to wear a stupid fucking hat, was to cheer and support your team. If you haven't done that, then you should give yourself an uppercut and throw your phone in the bin. This is as angry as I've ever seen you. Yeah. No, I'm not angry. Talk about, fan, enga- <laughs> Talk about fan engagement. Yeah. Good. I'm angry about lots of things. And so to Ellis Genge in his post-match interview with the BBC. <coughs> Sausages, a bottle of beer, and for some reason a lot of really quite extraordinary criticism. Before we talk about it, I just want to quickly remind you what he said on this subject when he came out of House of Rugby a few weeks ago. Have a listen to this again. I call a spade a spade, yeah, and I make that quite clear for me off with pretty much everyone I meet. Why is that? I think it's just... More testament to my old man, really, the way I've been brought up. He's not the loudest voice in the room, but he's a very straightforward bloke. If someone's pissing him off, he's always told me never let someone do X, Y, and Z, and it's yeah. probably why I'm the way I am. But yeah, I've always been brought up. If if someone's if you're not getting on with something or something's annoying, you never leave it to rest or like, do you know what I mean? Be yeah. reactive. Never sort of go away and bitch about things. Or, yeah. So if someone asks me a question, I'm gonna give them a straightforward answer. But some people like it, some people don't. I mean. I've made friends off and I've lost friends off it. So I'm not, I ain't gonna lose sleep over it because at yeah. least my, my it's clear, do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not going home thinking, fucking hell, I should have said that. What is quite funny, actually, is his reaction to some of the stuff. So I follow him on Instagram. The number of sausage tweets he's putting out now, <laughs> he's got some incredible artwork being delivered to him. Yeah. Um, thoughts on... I was just saying, I'm so the opposite. You just say yes and hi. And well, I just, I just ignore people rather than... If someone was state the fires, for example, uh, on Friday night after the old enemy, we went out to um, a place in in Edinburgh, and I was with Leah Lloyd, and this guy was from Barnard Castle School. He wasn't a very good advert for Barnard Castle School, and he was literally nosing me full on by just going, "You're odd. I think you're odd. Oh. You're odd." And I'm like, "Mate, what are you talking about?" <laughs> and literally, I was just he was nosing me uh, for like 30, 35, 40 minutes. And then finally went, got away, and he walked over and poured some, uh, poured some a bot, half, a bit of bottle of vodka on Leon Lloyd's. Leon Lloyd took the <laughs> took the bottle off him, and he was quite straightforward with him. <laughs> but luckily, someone took him out. Sort before. of control or oh delete job, or. God. But it, it was just uh, it, why he was saying like he almost brought a Scottish man to have a fight with me. So he told a Scottish man that I'd said I could have. Like have him in a fight or something. So this Scotchman came over like angry and like slammed his bottle down in front of me. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, what have you said? And I was like, what? And he goes, do you know that guy? And obviously he, I went, no, I haven't got a scooby do. He was like, I'm sorry, mate. I walked off. And then this guy came back, you are. You are. Oh my days. Do you know how mad people are? I think he's are. in the Facebook group, actually. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how mad people are doing stuff like that? I'm actually a bit like, you know when Ellis says, I like. Best thing, best thing was Leon was literally raging then for an hour and a half. And yeah. then I spoke to him on the Sunday, uh, the Saturday. But he's now a disciplinary after, officer. After he the can't. Game, um, he's like, I'm still raging. Really? I would. Because he didn't. He really wanted to obviously yeah. whack him, but he, yeah. he didn't whack him. Um, I mean, unfortunately, the bouncers did their job. I. Uh, I think that's amazing stuff. I mean, I'm a bit like when Ellis says, in my New Year's resolution was to have more straightforward conversations. <laughs> I'm a bit like, when people say, I'm like, yeah, no, that's great, actually. Yeah, I will take it as insults. It's only when I, in, I get really rattled do I, do I come back. But normally, like in the other day, actually, at the live show, some bloke yeah, ran. Yeah, didn't he? Yeah, just we walked up and he called me a C-U-N-T and I went, what do you, what, why are you doing that? And he went, well, you love it, don't you? And I went, what? I don't understand. <laughs> he went, you are, you are one. I went, I don't get it. And I stayed for the photo and he went to shake my hand and said, I'm not shaking my hand. You just called me a C-U-N-T. And he went, well, you love that stuff. I went, 
<laughs> I, no, I, you've, you've really confused me with somebody else. <laughs> Unless just, you're an Aussie, you can't yeah. use it I yeah. have a in civilized, a positive way. A civilised conversation, but I, yeah, I mean... <sighs> Do we want personalities in sport? Is yes. there still room for personalities yeah, in sports? Sport? Of sport. Of yes. I spent my whole life getting, when I was playing, back in the day, a long time ago, getting criticised for, for having a personality and doing Why did you keep doing it? Because it was me and it was important to be, you know... Look, I think there's a distinct difference between personalities, mm. which is why I always liked Conor McGregor and, and a Floyd Mayweather, because they would talk up a huge game, and especially combat sports, talk up a huge game, and if you delivered it, you were the ultimate. Like, Mayweather was the ultimate, you know, 50 fights or whatever it is, and being able to, to talk it up and constantly deliver. Conor McGregor talked up to a point... Uh, and everyone was like amazing. Then he got beaten. You make a much bigger fool for yourself by being that overconfident person. But also, the reason he talks is he gets way more money than anyone else, way more interest than anyone else, and, and it, it's part of the business. And I think having a personality is A, important in life if that's what you've got. I don't think you should force it. But I think it's important for the game because you want people to buy into it. You want to know characters. You don't want a set of, set of robots because otherwise, how do you ever engage? How do you feel akin? Like, people will watch me or do stuff equally because they hate me. You know, probably more people watch yeah. probably because they can't stand me because they're like, they want to have a moan and go, what's that dickhead said now? But again, it's because you're, you're relevant because you're being talked about, yeah. you know? And it's just, I just think it's very important because, you know, <clears> I, I, I fell in love with the game, especially at Wasp with players, because they had characters. I got to meet characters that, that made me excited to live this life and excited to be part of it. And I wanted to be interested and engaging. Imagine a press conference where you're like, yeah, no, well, credit to the opposition. Uh, it was pretty tough today. I mean, the coaches said, yeah, well, obviously, we'll probably just go back and analyse the game. And uh, yeah, thanks very much. What? Jesus, that's 95% of them. That. That's what yeah. I mean. Well, so why would you want that? I, I, I'm, I'm fully behind you, which is a... <laughs> Normally, people are fully behind time. you. <laughs> Why? I got there first. Wait, lads, lads, lads. Um, I, I totally agree with you. I, so I had a thing when I was at Sky, which is the Sky Sports News Test, which is, is on every single pub and it's constantly on mute. Which sportsman in the world would you reach for the remote control to turn up and listen to what they had to say? And I don't think there are very many in rugby right now. No, probably not. But actually, interesting. But it's probably is one. Eddie is definitely one. Gatlin's yeah. one. But I think there are more personalities you, than you than perhaps. But just I, because you have because a they give you something, you choose not to show it on in an interview doesn't mean you don't have a personality. No, you can I know, still have a I lot know. of personalities off the game, but still toe the party line on the. If you don't want that headline or an yeah. Eddie Jones headline of, yeah, the, we hate them. You, hate, you know, because yeah. ultimately, uh, Sam Johnson said that first. Yeah. But no one cared because yeah. it was from a Scottish player. But then, as soon as Lewis Ludlum, Lewis goes, Ludlum goes back and says they Everyone hate clubs, us, we yeah. hate them, then it go, goes out of control. Who is, but is there, so? Who so then? If it doesn't get the pickup when the Scottish player says it through yeah. Scottish media, so who's then ramping it up from our side? It's not because he's a personality his character; it's just how the media want to portray it. Yes. So then, who, who is the person who had the strongest media? Training. Who who is who is not the person that we've always seen in the media? Oh, that's a great question. A <laughs> From rare, the media. A rarity. A rare, um, who would be really? I'm trying to think. Because really I think Alan Wynne Jones, funny enough, is a, is a is a really interesting case of someone who very rarely says anything, but he's now starting to because he's got to that point of his career. Yeah, he was yeah. really big on Ospreys the other day. He's just started to just throw a little. I think grenades out there. I think there's a yeah. I think look, there's a lot of people who are, are more comfortable than they're not. You know, I think you know, Owen's got a great personality, and and as older he's got, I think he's more relaxed. But but you know, he's very. He serious. gives you nothing. Yes, though. yeah. But I think that's part of his part is his ultimate professionalism, and you know, I just don't think he ever wants anything to distract from the performance. Yeah. But he's got you know he's got a very good personality. Um, you know, oh. I think oh, still, be friends still burns <laughs> still, still burns right still burns. Um, trying to think who else we, who else we, we we who never kind of. Fires off. Yeah, but but actually would want to have would a want real... to. But I, you know, I think. What about your crew? You you had some very strong characters who yeah, were but, very comfortable. But then we had we all towed back this, it up. Yeah, we all towed the same line. You would say whatever you want between each other, right, and have crack. But then, you know, Clive was quite strict on let's not give them anything. To oh really? Them. So that was part of the thing. Shane, who he doesn't want that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Yeah, that was only because Ben, ben Cohen's deaf. Yeah. And he actually didn't hear the guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, he never wanted a headline for any reason to fire. He didn't want anyone to write the team talk for the other team. But I actually think as well, I think there's one thing, if you, 
you can have a personality in the media, right, and not ever slag anyone else off. So yeah, I mean, off, I mean more... it's quite good. I mean, it's like that Jamie George interview where he goes, who have been studying Japanese hookers. And he was like, ha ha, that's very funny. Yeah. But, and then just moved on and got yeah. on with it. Yeah, I think you can, you can have a personality by, like what Ellis did, was talking about something. So, you know, I've talked about the old team, team Bin Juice hat on the Instagram thing. Is that people, a lot of players would side with Ellis, right, because they, this is how they feel. But right. they're, they're not. They're not. So they prepared. love that someone is actually they saying. Abs- I tell yeah. you, I don't think there was one player currently playing that doesn't think that the media mug people off and, and certain yeah. fans on social mug people off, and they won't say it because they're frightened of it. Someone like Ellis coming out and saying it on that platform, everybody would have rallied at home, sitting there. Every player ever would have gone, yeah, the yeah. world is full of absolute sausages. It's like a walls factory around here. Nestle sausages, other ones are available. Um, Jolly Hog, you want them? Um, so I just I think, think they've actually sent Ellis some sausages. I bet they yeah. have. But I just think that that's, that's I think people, you know, if you do that and have a personality about yourself or about a story and make things interesting, that's fine. I never went through my career and slagged anybody or talked down about a, a, a nation or whatever. I never fell into that trap of like being they hate us. They hate. No, you just talk about it so it's a competitive battle. The fact is. Most people do hate me and hate England and talk about it all the time, and it, it is what it is. But you wouldn't say it at a press conference because it just fuels because yeah. they've got a column inches to fill. Phil, how much should the game? Because when he came in, we were asking about how proud he was of where he's got yeah. to, and he's got a fascinating backstory and is obviously, you know, excelling in an elite environment. How much should rugby actually be celebrating Ellis Genge? We're constantly told it's a game for. Well, it's not. Stuffy nose public not, school boys. I, I, I and actually, we've got a guy from Noel West who is winning I the Cup. I feel it is a game. For I completely snow. agree with you, but as a so point, therefore, you have to embrace him because he's, he's good at what his game is. So you have to then take the other side. So you have to take all sides of him as a rounded person. And it's, if some of it is straight talking, then that's the nature of his environment. And why should we not celebrate that as well? I mean, we had a- then media people have to get a bit more savvy. But there also, yeah, but there also are a lot of fannies around. Like I read some bloke going, I can't believe Ellis Trent had a, again had a beer on TV. It's like what? I mean, I remember one England cat. I'm not going to mention the name. Who, <laughs> who basically turned around and said when he found out one of the cricketers had a cigarette after a game, his kid cried. But like, if I came in and found out my kid was crying, I'd be like, what is wrong with you? I'd be like, I would, I'd ring out my wife, going, Chloe, right? She wouldn't be home. I'd be like, well, Chloe. You've been seeing the milkman because there's nowhere a kid of mine's that much of a fanny that he's crying over it. Like, I, I take my kid and go, No, actually, son, listen, they're, they're highly they're, they're highly experienced professionals. The recovery in us are hydrating. They've had a fantastic win in a very difficult place to go. They haven't won uh, against Scotland for the last couple of years. He's having one beer before he goes back to his hotel for, for a meal and hydrates and then fully into training. And just to let you know, one beer won't affect you. And perhaps, uh, you know, be like, Daddy, why do you drink every night? Oh, well, don't, don't, uh, don't, Ellis Genge is drinking. It's just crocker shit. These people are pathetic. And it's just, you know, I just upskilling people. And it's like, well, I mean, I go on another thing about people in sex education, you know, people freak out of all this Very stuff. You've got to it. let people, yeah, well, great TV series. But you've got to let people, you've got to answer questions and explain to people, stop villainising people yeah. for stupid stuff. Right. Off the field, we start with, obviously, we started with Sonia McLaughlin receiving a huge amount of criticism for what was a brilliant interview with Eddie Jones. We're rounding it off with Ellis, Jan- Ellis Genge, who's received a huge amount of criticism for having a beer. I just think it's ridiculous. So the question I want to ask mm-hmm. is, if you swap Ellis for Joe Marler, yeah. does everyone go, oh, great, Joe's such a good guy? And if so, why? Um, is there... Is there s- it, it's quite heavy for House of Rugby, but is there sort of... Is there unsaid... What social stuff you mean? Reasons why Ellis Genge gets grief no. and Joe Marler doesn't. No, 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 not at all. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be. You don't think it's a, no, no, no. I wouldn't. But, I wouldn't know. It's not at all. I think. I shut think, down. I think, no, no. I think. I think. Let me be very clear. I think anybody who did that would get the same shit. Okay. I, 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 I don't think it's because of that. I think just his tone and the way he delivers things, where when I first heard him I, and I, he spoke, I thought, oh, God, this looks like he's quite angry. Then I forgot that he always looks angry. And actually, when he came on the show, he looked very, he, he, he very, very, very angry. angry. <laughs> but he was extremely <laughs> articulate, extremely intelligent, and delivered what he was saying in a, really, in, in, a, in a concise way. It might not be in a polished media way, and it might not be in the most person-friendly way. But it, it's still there, so I don't think it'll be it'll do anything. So the question, therefore, is actually the uh, second part of this. If you go back to when Joe Marler was breaking through the England ranks and he'd done it, it is probably fair to say, actually, he would have taken a yeah. huge amount of crap. He used to take a lot of rubbish for his yeah. Mohican. Joe Marler turned up to England training with red-dyed hair with Jolly Hod, H- Hog in the side of his head. Double exposure. Double exposure, sorry. There should be two rashes yeah. of bacon. On the side of his head. 
Yeah. Sat opposite him in coaching, the table, and he had coaching. a fight with Doz that game. He had a massive scrap, and <laughs> I was like, "Who is this bloke?" Doz was like, "Oh, don't, 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 don't talk about it." And it was just bizarre. But but he, he's had a character now. Everybody loves Joe Marler yeah. because he's got a personality. Because do you know what? He trains hard. He plays hard. He's fundamentally a lovely bloke. Yeah. And he's good at what he does. He's got yeah. a personality. So on our show next week, is he? Yeah. No, he won't. Turn he will. Out. He'll come back. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll come, come back. back. So what we're saying is that Ellis Genge, keep drinking your beers, and in. Six months' time, two years' time, oh. everyone will go. My God, it's great. No, it's, no it's I, th- I think I think the, the caveat to that is if you win, yeah. right, a game, and you do that, and you choose to have your beer, and you decide to go in the media. Look, I I wouldn't have done it for, for the sole reason that oh, you just don't need more extra shit. You just don't need that that admin on 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 top of yourself because you know people are going to bite. If you don't care, which I think is right not to, then it's not it's not a problem. But I wouldn't do it after a loss. And I certainly wouldn't do it, you know, if I hadn't played that well or I hadn't got on. There's certain caveats to me doing it. But I think in a little while time, if, if Ellis keeps playing well and doing everything, everyone will be like, God, do you remember that time he did that and called out all these sausages? But sausages don't know the sausages. That's the best bit. <laughs> sausages think that they're pointing fingers at other sausages and realise that they're not sausages. So it's a difficult... It's getting, it's getting a bit profound for House of Rugby. No, no, but, it, but it's, no, but it's no true. Sausages like, mad people are... don't know they're mad, do they? They go, oh, that guy's mad. You're like, do you know you're completely insane? You're like, no, I'm not. He walks off wearing a pair of box shorts <laughs> and his head using, riding, riding a unicycle. You're like, okay. Penny farthing. Um, Ellis Gange, keep doing what you're doing. Putting Noel West on the map, winning Calcutta Cups. Exactly. Endorsing sausages and drinking beer. That was a pretty good life to me. <laughs> um, on to the Guinness Pipe Predictor. How did we all do? That. Right, do you want to go through how we got on? There are 3,100 people. Where are they, what, what league are there 3,100 people in, Si? In our House of Rugby League? Are they really? Well, that's not very many. Let's get a few more of you... Um, Facebook is in there. 3,100 in the House of Rugby Match Pint League. Uh, in round two, <sighs> I came... Wait, do you want to have a guess where I came? Well, you scored 58 points. So you I came 29th. Right. Did you? Out of 3,100 for this week. And actually, I'd have done better if the Italians hadn't scored at the end there. Tins, you're officially visible in the league for all to see because you have made your way up to 746th out of... Thanks. Uh, 3,100. Producer Sai, who knows very little about rugby, has managed to land himself uh, 1,975th. And last week in the round, do you want to know where you came? <laughs> <laughs> where? Where? Uh, I would give you a D minus. You came 2,235th out of 3,000. Yeah, but isn't that because yeah, right? I um, didn't miss the first week? So you are currently, uh, including, the, yeah, you're currently 2,738th in the league overall. Yeah, I'm so, so I was never going to do that well. But, it did, but I did get 67% correct results. Correct winners called in the last 20 games. 67%. So. How many games have you called? Three. Three. So, right, so 67% of three is... Two, two out of three. <laughs> Good. Um, Craig Turner, congratulations oh. to you. You are overall leader. You are 6,000 points ahead of James, which isn't difficult. Ollie Gosling won round two in the House of Rugby League with two perfect predictions and 79 points. That is quite good. So you've won a pair of tickets to the Guinness Six Nations. Pick wisely, choose a pint, have fun. Not bad for a weekend's work. Ollie, well done to you. For those of you who don't know, the Guinness Pint Predictor is very simple. We make it incredibly complicated. It is very simple. You predict the winner and the margin of the Guinness Six Nations games every week. And if you're within three, you win a free pint of Guinness. If you're within seven, you can give a pint of Guinness. We're getting better at this. You can download the free Match Pint app. You can set your scores. You can win pints and prizes. And you can take us on in our House of Rugby League using the code HOR. And you can play every single round until the tournament is done and dusted. Um, so get involved. Let's get up from 3,100. No predictions this week. What are you doing? Uh, was it in the match pipe predictor? Uh, I, I was actually... I was picking what I... Well, what do we, do we want to go through? What Any further thoughts? Anything you'd like to add to this week's show um, which we haven't got into? Mm, any other business? Any other any business? Other business? Roll, up, roll up. No, we can leave it there if not. Donald Trump got off. You can actually catch your train. No, I'm still going to miss it. No, you're are not. You? I've actually parked... At Swindon this time, so I shouldn't actually say I can get take numerous the train, trains says, home. Tins, take the train. Um, <coughs> we need to have been juice 15 at one week as yes, well. Yes, we do. We do. That could be a lot of fun, actually. That would be very fun. Johnny, uh, Bar- Johnny Barrett, a hooker. That is, it. that is it for this yeah. week. Thank you for watching. Test match at second round from, yeah. the, from Bath. Yeah. Who? I need Test to figure match. out his I name. I can't remember what his name was. Do you remember? I remember his name as well. Joe and Boo? No, no, no. No, no, no. He's not second round. He'd be a good... He'd be a good bingeer, sir. Yeah. Was it Joe Mabu or Joe Mabu? Joe Mabu. Joe Mabu. Yeah. Um, we're, we're formulating. There's quite a few. There's quite a few. Uh, Kirk, Kirk, there's a ginger bloke. You speak um, Kershaw, Kirsch, uh, Wasp Kershaw prop, I think. 
There's a few, there's a few old names. There's so many binners. Hashtag big, Honestly, big, it's big absolute time. bin juice. Please um, give bin juice, team bin juice to follow on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. I think we've got through quite a lot this week, actually. We've talked rugby. We've set the world straight. Oh, snacks. Send in your snacks. And your cakes. Vacuum pack sealed and cakes. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to House of Rugby. We're a YouTube show and a podcast. Don't forget Liquid Football with the wonderful Kelly Cates and her team every Monday. Thank you to the fellas. Don't forget House of Rugby in Cardiff, Tuesday, March the 3rd, ahead of England, Wales. God, wish us well for that. All the details will be on the Facebook page where I hope you're all going to be very nice to each other from now on. Uh, and the tickets will be available from five o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. See you in seven days from all of us. Bye for now. You've been watching the House of Rugby on Joe. Together with Guinness. Drink responsibly. Visit drinkaware.co.uk for the facts.